why it is that your high street, if you live in the UK, is probably about 90% Turkish barbers. You can get them lined up one next to another. Turkish barber, Turkish barber, Turkish barber, Turkish barber. And you might wonder to yourself, why? Why are they all opening up shop? Surely the market is oversaturated with these at the moment. And also, how are each of these businesses, the people starting these businesses, getting the cash up front to be able to open up in what is generally quite high value, high street property in the first place? Because you look at them and you go, this is prime real estate for any business. If you're in the center of a town anywhere in England, unless you're in like a remote rural village somewhere. How are these people getting the money? I interrupt this segment to bring you an important message about this stuff, the dollar. Um, not going so well, is it? Inflation is out of control and debt is even more out of control. In fact, the US government is on the verge of spending a trillion dollars a year just servicing its debt. It spends about 6.6 .6 trillion and it only collects about 4.6 trillion in revenues. So you can see that this situation is, uh, you know, rapidly taking a turn for the worse. You might want to consider some gold and silver. And that is why that we've done a partnership deal with Goldco and we've created lotuseatersgold.com. Go and check that out. It's an offer for our American viewers. You can transfer a proportion of your IRA into this. And if you do so, you're going to get some of this lovely stuff, some, some, some bonus silver thrown in on top, uh, up to $10,000. Or you can even take delivery of the physical gold to your home address if you prefer. So if you want money that goes clang when you put it down, check out lodizedisgold.com. And when you walk past them, why is only ever one of them typically have regular customers? Why do the rest of them always seem to be abandoned? For instance, in Swindon, we've got a Turkish barber nearby. The, have you ever seen any customers in there? Maybe once or twice. You we see... don't just have one nearby. Oh, yeah, but there's, there's one in particular that I'm thinking of, because Rory asked me to bring this one up. You don't often see very many customers in there. No, it's completely empty. I don't Constantly. know if you noticed on the high street, there is a brand new one that opened like a week or two ago. Oh, I must have missed that. The, the Turkish barbers are just starting to become <laughs> visual white noise to me. But again, new business, um, opening week, no customers. I've never seen anyone in that one either. And it will be there for as long as it needs to be because they don't go in, out of business either. I've not seen a single one ever go out of business. And the one that I was referring to that also has no customers has a, an incredibly expensive brand new Mercedes parked outside of it, presumably owned by the owner of this Turkish barber. So uh, expensive real estate, no customers, brand new Mercedes. And if you're always losing money, how can you pay taxes? The, so... only, the only answer I can have for this is that uh, I'm racist for asking the question. That's the only answer that I can have because that's the answer that I've experienced when I've seen other people ask these questions on Twitter and online. But first, while we're talking about aliens, Let's talk about Rory's latest article for the website called UFOs and Other Things. It's a nice nondescript title. I think he could have named it better, but the article itself is actually excellent. He's talking not just about UFOs and crop circles, as you can see in this particular image, but his own history in Wiltshire, experiencing folk tales that you hear around the place, and myths, and how humanity, and England in particular, is a place of myth and legend and how we need all of those to be able to have a better understanding of the world. Because when you start to crunch everything down into pure quantitative figures and science, then it can take a lot of the mystique and mystery out of the world, important as those things are. So this is well worth a read. It was a very enjoyable uh, use of my time to go through that, and it will be yours as well. It's a free article as well. So if you want to sign up for the website, you can feel free, but we do also have excellent free content on here every single day. So this, was, this, this investigation was kick-started by me spotting this particular post on Twitter from Ghost of Goose saying that Turkish barbers opening up everywhere, often in affluent town centers where other businesses can't afford to stay. Because yeah, you go through a lot of town centers in the UK nowadays, and it is Turkish barbers and charity shops. You'll get some independent businesses. Pound shops, they'll do well. Pound shops will do all right, yep. But mainly it'll be empty Turkish barbers and charity shops. I don't mind the charity shops too much. I know some people are annoyed by them, but you can often find some good deals in there. But the Turkish barbers, a bit confusing. How can you get your hair cut? Not very. I mean, uh, uh, like may, since five have, years ago. You may have noticed that I've not had my hair cut for a little while now. No, but a, a massive increase in barbers, not many more people suddenly getting double the haircuts they used to. 
I mean, it's yeah, you're right. But <laughs> it's not like um, there, there's some kind of fungible good where you can go and you can get as many as you want. I want another save, one. You can save them for later. <laughs> you don't just walk past the Turkish barbers and go, oh, I fancy a haircut. And then you come out and go, oh, I'm a bit peckish for more. I'll go to there. And then by the time you're at the end of the street, you're completely shaved clean. You've got a cue ball going on. Would be a laugh. It, it, <laughs> like the pub crawl, but the barber crawl. <laughs> the pub crawl. It would, it would be a laugh, but that's not how these businesses tend to work. And this ghost of goose points out that they do bring down the, the tone of an area terribly. And because, yeah, I'm sorry, they do. If you're walking around a high street, especially in a nice, lovely, rural English town, and you've got some big Turkish barbers, they don't fit in with the aesthetic. It's like in Hot Fuzz. It doesn't really fit with the town's rural aesthetic, does it? One of those situations. And uh, the typical response that you see to something like this is this. I do think your tweet has a hint of racism about it. More than a hint. Thank you. Thank you for your kind input, dear Boomer. Please switch off your phone, go and see your grandchildren, and stay away from online discourse. Please, because you have nothing to offer but the mere bleatings of a brain-dead moron saying, oh, but you're racist, though. Oh, but you're racist. I think Dan had a good response to this uh, by just pointing out your mentality is how 19,000 girls got raped in South Yorkshire while the authorities turned a blind eye because people aren't just pointing out that they turned down, bring the tone down of a town. They're also talking about the cultural changes that come when inevitably you end up introducing large foreign populations into otherwise small and rural communities. It can change the atmosphere. It does change the tone, and often in a way that you don't have to be happy with. It's not racist to, ex to exp uh, express a preference. Being against money laundering is racist now. It is. It is. Uh, Malcolm had an excellent response to this, which is, I'll treat that as not worth a full reply. So completely owned, completely destroyed. This man's facts and logic have been used to desecrate this man's grave, and he's not even dead yet. Tweet review. <laughs> <laughs> Tweet review. That's what, that's what we're in right. Uh, what we're doing uh, right now. I just want to point out as well that a lot of people had this kind of response where they pointed out to Dan. They said, "Oh well, if that's so bad, why don't we ever hear you racists talk about this?" And it'll be a headline of, "Oh, the uh, the, the UK's largest grooming gang," and it's just a, a row of white faces. And the reason that people don't talk about these, or at least people on our side of the aisle don't, is because generally speaking, as soon as the police are made aware of these situations wherein there's no racial component or no minority component, uh, the police go, all right, we'll look into that. They start an investigation immediately. The law is enforced. Yeah, and they do what they're supposed to do. Whereas with Rotherham, for instance, it was ignored for, what, two decades, purely for the sake of not wanting to appear racist. That's why we don't bring these things up. Because generally, if it's white people doing the crime, the police do their job. But moving on, the reason that one of the, a lot of people are confused about the Turkish farmers, barbers and why they're popping up should be obvious. And that's because, as the Daily Mail points out here, they might be being used as bases for human trafficking, slave labor, and drugs, according to security experts. So I'll just read through a bit of this article. There's quite a bit of info to go through, so I'll try and make sure I get through it as quickly as possible while making it clear for everyone. So security sources told the Mail on Sunday that gangs are using some businesses to conceal the proceeds of crimes and that many could be a base for human trafficking and slave labor in the same way that nail bars and car washes have been used in the past. The explosion of barbershops in London and other major UK cities has prompted experts to call for an investigation. So they say the cities, but it's also the towns and the villages as well. You can go to some random village that you've never heard of in the middle of nowhere. Chances are it'll have a Turkish barber in it. Some are being run by Albanian and Kurdish gangs. So they're not even Turkish, damn it. We're being lied to on so many levels. Have you figured out where Kurdistan is yet? No. Nah. Because we had a conversation about this and you, were, you, you thought it was all in Iran. No. Nah. All right. Um, the third of it's in Turkey. That's so fair. That, that's, yeah. that's fair, but the Albanians as well. Yeah. You ever seen those, uh, a lovely green text from a guy who was like, I am Turkish, but I became Christian, so Albanians would stop calling me brother? <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. I've, I've not seen that, actually. But anyway, so it's Albanian and Kurg Kurdish gangs suspected of making money by smuggling tens of thousands of migrants from Calais to Dover on lorries and small boats across the channel. Former Metropolitan Police Officer, and I feel like they chose this man in particular to avoid any accusations of racism, Ali Hassan Ali. We were just like, okay, we need to get this guy's opinion on it just to make sure. <laughs> uh, said, 
Right across high streets, we have seen a boom in barbers opening up since the pandemic. A lot of these shops have thousands of pounds of equipment, but no customers. While in some of these cases, shops will be involved in legitimate business, from my own experience, there is strong reason to believe a large number, particularly those owned by Albanians, Turks, and Kurds, have links to organized crime. This can be people smuggling and, in some cases, drugs. We know that people smuggling gangs in Calais have been traditionally operated by Kurds, but they are now working with the Albanians, presumably to smuggle across our new generation of cocaine dealers. He added, the sudden increase of barbershops is really concerning because they are playing a part in funding human trafficking and the misery that it causes. The latest data compile, compiled by the National Hair and Beauty Federation shows that between 2014 and 2019, there was a 64% increase in the number of barbershops in the UK, from 7,958 to 13,046. So you've got, what, almost uh, just a, a little over 6,000 more barbershops. Do, have we had almost double the need for haircuts? As you, as you point out, has demand for haircuts and close shaves with a straight razor, have they really increased that much? I doubt it. This isn't a situation where access, <laughs> supply creates demand. That's not one of those situations. I'm just going to tell a short story. I'm not All right, go on. Because um, I've been to a few of these before I figured out and then went, no. And oh, yeah. I found someone that's a Brazilian place. Before you noticed the shackles on the people uh, cutting your hair. No, the conversations I had with the people cutting my hair what scared me. Oh, really? Because um, a few of them were clearly illegal. Like, after talking to them, there was one yes. guy from Syria, and I was like, how did you get here? And he just like told me. I was like, oh, all right. Oh, well, he just came straight out with yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, there was one guy from Iraqi Kurdistan. Uh, so we started talking about his upbringing. Uh, he told me he went to a university that doesn't exist. Uh, oh. I then asked him about, because he was telling me he was there during the rise of ISIS and them taking over a large part of Iraq. So I asked him about that period, and he told me that ISIS didn't exist, and it was all Western lies. And I was like, uh, okay, all right. He's like, hey, by the way, do you want a clean shave next to your neck? No, I don't. No, I'm all I, right. I'm good, mate. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Maybe that, maybe that's wrong of me to be, think that maybe the chap who um, defends ISIS might be in a, a guy I don't want with a razor near my neck. You know, while I could just call you racist, and I'm sure if dear old Malcolm were here, he would call you racist. Well, I've, I've got a bar recommendation for him. I can say that, you know, uh, you're alive. Yeah. So <laughs> it turns out it was a good decision <laughs> because otherwise you might not have been. Not to say that everyone offering you a close shave with a straight razor is going to cut your neck, but generally, he ISIS. <laughs> if he's defending ISIS, maybe think twice. Uh, at the same time, let's carry on with the <laughs> information in this article. The more upmarket hair salons have shown an increase of 21% from uh, almost 14,000 to almost 17,000 from 2014 to 2019. According to the National Hair and Beauty Fe Federation, there are over 46,000 hair and beauty businesses in the UK, with three quarters of these employing fewer than five people. Last year, for a, for a, a definitive example of one of these barbershops that has just been the front for a criminal organization, let's just see this. An investigation by the National Crime Agency found that Gulwali Jabber Jaberkel, who was 33, was using his barbershop in Collendale, North London, as a front for organized crime. Really? I know, big shock here, big shock. The Afghan was trying to recruit lorry drivers to bring migrants from northern France and Belgium into the UK, offering around £2,500 per person smuggled. It's really weird, isn't it? That's a lot of money. You're, I, I'm sure he. Most in the Turkish barbers, though, there's quite a lot of turnover. Mm, I have staff. noticed that. Generally, you know, for the amount of staff that they have and the amount of staff that they turn over and the lack of customers, you've got to think, you know, these, these staff members aren't doing their job right, are they? That must be it. Has to be it. The close shaves they're giving people, terrible. The few haircuts, you're driving customers away, lad. We're going to have to bring out someone in. And it's just the same problem over and over and over again. Can't get the staff anymore. Yeah, just can't rely on good people. <laughs> From northern France. <laughs> yeah. He was arrested at his barbershop and last April was jailed for 10 years. I mean, um, longer than that, please. He's trying to sneak in illegal people into the country and sneak them into... Literal slavery situations. De so. de deport, please. Or, yeah, de to Taliban, please. I think. Deport as well. Either jail him forever or deport him out of the country. Because 10 years from now, well, actually, probably five years from now, when he gets out, he will just try and do the same thing again. And, and the British security services will be shocked. They'll be surprised Pikachu face at the side. <gasps> no one saw this one coming. Three other associates of him of his received shorter sentences. The NCAA. 
Uh, the NCA recently warned that the amount of criminal cash leaving the UK has risen exponentially over the past four years, driven by Albanian drug gangs sending money home. Organized crime syndicates from the Balkan state have almost taken over the UK's cocaine market, while Turkish gangs have traditionally dominated the heroin supply. So we can't even get native drug dealers anymore. Terrible shame. I thought we voted Brexit for better than this. Trusted associates will be tasked. Okay, people joke like that, but it would actually be better if no, all it, of the. It would. Yeah, because there would be less violence. Because that's the reason the foreigners did take over the drug trades, because they are more violent than the domestics. Yes. That's not my point. No, no, that's that's. It, it is important to note that British drug dealers are actually our best drug dealers. They're our guys because if we get them found guilty, we can punish them here, whereas just deporting them isn't really a threat. And also, if if we get them here and punish them, generally speaking, the uh, police establishment won't be terrified of arresting them and actually punishing them for the crimes that they do and being afraid of called being called racist for doing so or inspiring hatred towards particular minority groups. Should I actually run on a pledge to make all drug dealers British once again? I think we should. Yeah. That's, that's what's going to win us the next election. You're going to get <laughs> council estate after council estate will be voting for us. That's right, they took our jobs there, dude. Okay. Make yeah. drug dealers British again, yeah. Uh, trusted associates will be tasked with shipping back the proceeds of crime with businesses used as a front to clean the money. And that's why they're popping up everywhere. If they are stopped, they are able to argue that the wealth is from British-based businesses, such as car washes, nail bars, or barber shops. Gwyn Rankin, who used to work for the Human Trafficking Center, which became part of the NCA, said, it may be that people who are smuggled into the UK could be made to work in these shops until their debt is paid. We should be looking at them like we did at the nail bars and car washes. Last night, and this article is from, what, March, I think? So that'll be back in March. A spokesman for the NCA said, Money laundering is a key factor of serious and organized crime. The NCA and its partners in law enforcement, government, and the private sector are committed to disrupting the flow of illicit cash and preventing organized criminals from benefiting from their crimes. So maybe get in touch with the councils and tell them to stop letting so many Turkish barbershops literally engulf and consume the high street, please. But let's look at another example of what I'm talking about. So there was this article from The Telegraph at around the same time, talking about the same subject that gave a different example in here. So the police officers behind the first UK's first child modern slavery prosecution previously warned that traditional Turkish barbershops are using slave labor, urging men to use the, who use these services to look out for exploitation. So when you avoided that close shave, you were just doing a citizen's work, all in a day's work, eh? I am indeed a vigilante. There you go. Thank you for your service, kind fellow. The hero Swindon deserves. <laughs> I won't go to the Turkish barber. I'll go to the Brazilian. There we go. There is no English one. They're all gone. There is one. Huh? Yeah, yeah, well. Where? Uh, in the um, West Swindon Link Center, there is a barber shop next to the Asda, which is owned and run entirely by English people. Give me a minute. Yeah, yeah, okay. You can look into that. You can book your next hair appointment. Detective Inspector Charlotte Tucker's two-year investigation into the forced labor of Vietnamese teenagers at Deluxe Nails in Bath and Gorgeous Nails in Burton-on-Trent resulted in the conviction of three people. The young salon workers had been trafficked into the UK and were forced to work 60-hour weeks for little or no recompense. In 2018, a Kite Mark-style scheme was introduced for car washes as well to crack down on modern slavery, where the public would be able to choose a car wash displaying the scheme's logo, meaning the site had passed an audit. Because obviously we've got lots of nail salons in the UK that are owned by foreign people, and also car washes, where it will be not the fancy, te uh, fancy big manual, uh, sorry, automatic car washes you can go to, but the manual ones where you can get people to do it by hand. These will always be run and staffed by foreigners. So it seems that a lot of these places, as well as the Turkish barbers, are also fronts for illegal foreign criminal activity. My taxi driver in Afghanistan, he'd actually come to the UK and got a job doing that. Oh, so for sure. Yeah, there um, you go. When they arrested him and asked him if he wanted to claim asylum, he just said, what is asylum? So then he volunteered to get to Wait, back so, to Afghanistan. So they arrested him and then went, how would you like to be jammed in the British asylum system for the next 10 years so we can't get rid of you? That was their first that, question. That's, that's the system. Working. After they found out this guy is literally just an illegal immigrant. They went, hey, would you like to stay here and leech off the UK government yeah. for the next 10 years? Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much, English police system. But along with all of this, all, all the organized crime, there comes a lot of the other problems that you just get with a lot of hostile foreign populations coming in who oftentimes are actually quite hostile to one another as well because criminals and the criminal gangs, this may surprise you, don't get along with each other either. Big shock, I know. Pick your jaw off the floor. Feud between Summercoats barbers turned into a fatal street fight. 
Five men are on tra- trial for murdering Barber Seba Rash. A nice, typical summer coat name right there. A Derbyshire barber was stabbed to death during an ongoing feud by a gang associated with a rival barbershop. Now tell me, if you've been to Derbyshire before, <laughs> these are just some... <laughs> I was like, could you imagine... Like you go, the last English barber I went to, it was an old man running it. Could you imagine them having gangs? <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine very slowly. <laughs> Perhaps all of the all of the combatants in the local gang war have managed to incapacitate themselves by blowing out their hips. <laughs> They're writhing around on the floor in agony. When I read a story about oh, there's a gang war between barbers in Derbyshire, it's like, oh, really? That's all the information I need, is it? Yep, yep. Well, tell me if these names sound like classic, classic British names to you. So obviously we had a, a Mr. Slemon, who was known friends to friends as Seba Rash. Uh, these people who murdered him were Daniel Panahi, Kelvin and Gar- uh, sorry, um, Harish Zandi, Mohammed Rasuli, uh, Sam Mahazi, and Mohammed Sekak. Classic British names, right there. So no Sekak. Did you? No, no, <laughs> neither did. <laughs> Neither did I. Uh, then we got this one, which was quite fun. All I needed to do was type in Turkish Barbershop into Google and then hit the news tab. And I, was, I found quite a few of these incidents. Two discharged from hospital and water, uh, Westerhope Barbershop remains taped off after residents saw Man on Fire. What was the name of this barbershop? Can you reckon? It was Ahmed's. It was Ahmed's Barbershop had been set on fire. To be fair, I've never done it, but could it be that fire thing they do? What the insurance fraud? No, you never, you never seen like the options you can have in a Turkish, like an actual Turkish bar. I've not actually been in. One. Okay, well, one that's not a front for crime. You can get the option where they have like uh, some fire, and then they put the fire behind your ears and stuff. Oh, I have seen that actually. Yeah, that looks stupid. Yeah, it's, it's dumb. It looks like a really dumb thing to do. But no, the police are treating it as arson. Okay, uh, because also a man came screaming out of the shop on fire. So unless <laughs> unless that went really <laughs> wrong. <laughs> <laughs> then I don't think it was just a freak accident. Yeah. And uh, then we get some lovely stories like this. Man accused of raping woman after locking her in the barbershop that he worked. A man, in nice big capital letters, is accused of raping a woman after allegedly shutting her in the barbershop. Barzan Naushawani is said to have carried out the sex attack on August 7th, 2022. Uh, this was in Glasgow, so that's a classic Glaswegian name. Uh, plenty of Scots I've met over the years have been known as uh, Barzan. And uh, the 38 year old faces an initial charge as well, uh, an additional charge that he operated a private hire taxi without a license on that date. So, big surprise, right? So, there you go. That's the investigation done. I hope you can put all of the evidence together and realize exactly if you're living in a town and the entire high street is wall to wall barbershops, what's going on? And maybe if you do need a haircut, either A, try and find the one. English barbershop within a 50 mile radius to give you a haircut or do what I do and embrace the lion's mane. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast The Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the Brokenomics series, this episode on the economics of the USSR. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>